Hello friends, so this is uh, chapter number 6 for IB Diploma Biology students and uh, this is 6.1. 6.1 has got 8 different topics that we are going to see one by one. So let's get started with the topic number 1 which is the structure of the digestive system. As you can see in front of you is the most basic structure of your digestive system. We are going to take one by one different organs that are of our digestive system. We are going to see that what different secretions are coming from there and what is it doing. So let's start with the mouth first. So this is a buccal cavity or so called mouth. So as far as the mouth is concerned, that like indeed that where the secretions are coming from, the secretions are coming from the salivary glands. Okay, so glands are associated with it will be salivary gland and what they are secreting. It is secreting your saliva and saliva has got different components so because the salivary glands are secreting let us say saliva and saliva has got different component component number one obviously water Compo number, component number two will be your salivary amylase so amylase and what does it do it basically converts a starch okay it basically try to digest a starch you could say so number one, digest starch. What else could be there? Um, it has got some defensive proteins such as lysozyme that we do not have to bother about. Like since we are eating from outside, obviously some bacteria can be there and these bacteria can be handled by some different enzymes such as lysozyme. Okay, and uh, the next thing would be the food needs to be a little bit moistened and lubricated. So there are some protein water accumulated like accumulating onto those um, food particles along with some proteins such as mucin is going to lubricate your food so that it can be converted into a bolus. Okay, uh, uh, that portion of the food that we are going to gulp down and that is known as bolus and that is because of mucin and water. All those these other things were not are not there into the IB diploma like as far as the 6.1 is concerned but at least it's it's good to have an idea about it okay the next thing would be our esophagus as far as the esophagus is concerned we do not digest as such in esophagus so this is our esophagus as far as the esophagus is concerned, no digestion, only a, 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 like there is a coordinated movement of different muscles that is going to let food to go in one particular direction and that coordinated movement is known as peristalsis. We are supposed to see peristalsis in a bit detail but that is more or less um, peristalsis is all about. So esophagus is there. The next thing is uh, stomach. Okay, So let us go on to this third portion which is stomach. Stomach is uh, where we are going to store our food. Okay, so we are going to store food. Okay, what else can be done? Stomach has gastric gland. Okay, what does it has? Gastric gland. And as far as the gastric gland is concerned, then the next question is what it is secreting. Number one is it is secreting HCl, hydrochloric acid. And the chloric acid, hydrochloric acid is um, very acidic that is being produced by the stomach. Now the next thing is, what is its role? Why do we want to secrete HCl? Is it not going to harm us? Yes, it can uh, if, it, it, if it is going to touch our normal cells, but it never touches them. There is a very thick layer of mucus is there that helps us to prevent all those injuries from HCl. Now then what is it going to do? HCl is going to kill all those pathogens and bacteria that are going to come from outside. Okay, so it is going to kill pathogen number one. And second number is since it is going to provide an acidic environment and we know in an acidic environment proteins denature. It basically in a layman's terms you can say that the proteins are going to open up so that other protein cleaving enzymes can act on that um, protein so that it can be chopped off. So this is the second role of the HCl. Okay, 
what else gastric glands are able to secrete it is able to secrete some proteases protease it is able to secrete that protease is going to digest these proteins isn't it okay so this is portion number 2 let us go ahead with the the next thing and that will be our liver okay so liver liver basically has uh, some digestive roles and some non digestive roles so let us concern ourselves only with the digestive roles the liver is going to secrete a bile juice okay what is it going to secrete bile juice most of the time the question comes liver helps liver digest liver's enzyme like whatever liver is secreting that actually digests the lipid or fat that is not true because liver is unable to digest anything like its secretion which is which are coming into the digestive system they cannot digest as such anything they cannot chop off something oh then what is it doing it is basically emulsifying the fat emulsifying means that if you are eating anything which is fatty um and that is going to make a very large blob kind of a thing inside our stomach because it cannot dissolve itself into the water it is apolar fats are apolar so that is the reason why some of the lipases lipases are those enzymes which can digest the lipid or the fat these lipases cannot act on to those big blobs of uh, fat so bile juices goes and it converts it emulsifies it emulsification means that basically converts this large droplet into very very tiny droplet now these tiny droplets are good to handle and what you can do you can take directly this uh, lipase lipase can act onto these fat molecules and they can convert it back into the uh, glycerol and fatty acid that can be absorbed lately um like later into the small intestine okay so this is the basic digestive role for the liver let us go on to the next thing and which is the small intestine okay no before the small intestine let us see the this portion this is our pancreas again same as um, same as our liver it has got different roles to play it is going to secrete insulin glucagon it is going to that are hormones okay so basically it can secrete two kind of proteins one will be hormones and another will be enzymes so we have to bother ourselves only towards the enzyme portion enzymatic portion so this is our pancreas okay so pancreas is that gland in our whole digestive system that has the capacity that has the capacity to secrete each and every kind of enzyme okay let us try to see what can be there in a in a well nutritioned um, food so there will be protein so to digest protein the pancreas has proteases okay well and good second thing will be fat to digest fat pancreas is able to secrete lipases okay number 3 dna and rna are other biomolecules and for them the pancreas is secreting nuclease okay and the next thing is the sugar and for sugar the pancreas is able to secrete amylase okay amylase was also there right here as you can see but this amylase um, the the both are doing the same work but one is being produced by mouth and it is working at its maximum efficiency at ph at neutral ph and pancreas tick amylase is going to work onto its maximum efficiency at uh, somewhat basic ph okay what else uh, okay you must ask me that why did i say basic because stomach was secreting acid then the the nature of uh, the food that is present into the duodenum has to be acidic no because pancreas on to the other side it is also secrete bicarbonate ion bicarbonate ion so that the ph can be neutralized and it becomes a little bit of basic okay so these are the pancreatic secretions that helps food to di- get digested into the duodenum portion okay so duodenum as in what like small intestine this portion which is a small intestine can be um divided into what 
three portions. So small intestine can be divided into three portions and these are duodenum, jejunum and ileum. This is the different portions and this thing which is protruding out it is this is known as the vermiform appendix. Vermiform means like which is like worm and appendix appendix. You must have heard some people are having their appendix removed and the condition for which they remove their appendix is appendicitis. That is not in the into the course and we are going to so henceforth we are going to leave that and that is going to open the small intestine is going to open in a large intestine as far as the small intestine is concerned all the secretions that uh, came from stomach um, liver pancreas it will get enough time because it's the most longest portion it will get the enough time to get all the things digested and get absorbed at the same time point so in small intestines main role is um, to digest to digest the food and to absorb the food Next, we go on to the large intestine. So this will be large intestine. Large intestine mainly has got the relation with absorption of water, largely. And then we have got rectum. Rectum is the portion where undigested defecating material stool is going to be stored for some time period. And after like enough time period like when you want to feel urge to defecate and then it will be uh, sent out from the body from an opening which is known as anus. So this was our first portion structure of the digestive system. So we took the basic idea of digestive system. Let us move on to the second topic which is a structure of the small intestine.